Let's talk about content. Hanny, welcome to the show. How are you doing, my brother? I'm doing awesome, Russ. How are you? Not too bad. I'm excited. I'm excited about this topic because you and I met probably back in, I don't know, 2014, 14, yeah, 14, 15, yeah. And uh, we had been involved in podcasting and, you know, content creation. So we've been doing this a while. And one of the things that always comes up in my conversations when I talk about the production process and producing shows for other people is, is why, why content is important. Why should I create content? And, and I know that you've been involved in the industry and sharing content and repurposing content. We'll get into that in a little bit, Mm -hmm. but the reality is, is what's the value in this day and age of creating content, sharing it and using content as part of your marketing efforts to me it's it's just connection it's human connection and building that trust factor with somebody uh, especially when you don't know them yet or they don't know you yet right so yeah um just putting out value to the world putting out content that's relevant to what your target audience is looking for or is frustrated with just builds that trust with them and that, that's kind of the short answer is building trust and before someone wants to do business with you they want to get to know you a little bit content's one way for doing that yeah. more importantly they want to know that hey this person is trustworthy um, and then when you do content regularly this is magical effect where you get top of you become top of mind so when someone's thinking about oh i'm looking for oh i'm just optimizing my seo for my business so who do i talk oh who's that guy that's posting all those seo videos right so that you become top of mind for you know, whatever specialty you're in, whatever business you're in. So just doing that content consistently, it's just, it's amazing. Honestly, like I get a lot of feedback from me. People say, oh, I'm learning so much from you. I see you everywhere. And <laughs> you're top of mind, right? You become top yeah. of mind. You're always there in their feed. Whether they're looking or watching every piece of content, we don't know, but you're top of mind. That's the, all thing, the thing, I, I, and I love what you're doing recently on, on the, the quick videos. Uh, yeah. I love that piece of the equation. And the other piece is that consistency plays a big role into this. And so when you think of content creation, and if you don't know Hanny and you haven't connected with Hanny yet, go connect with him, repurpose.io. I just want to share this with you because he's doing some amazing work on multiple platforms and uh, creating some snappy content that I'm just really enjoying and so I wanted to share Hanny and his story with you. But the reality is, is consistency and mm-hmm. content builds authority, it builds visibility, and it builds it builds really your brand where you, you say top of mind. And so what about uh, repurposing content that you've, re- you've created previously and you want to purpose it in the future? Uh, do you do you recommend that, or what are your thoughts about that, Hanny? Yeah, absolutely. To me, re- taking existing content you've already created and and remixing it or repurposing it, almost like a DJ, you like make little clips from them, turn them into different formats. That's a powerful way to be consistent without having to kind of get on this hamster wheel of creating content every day. Yeah. So a lot of people feel you know you have a business to run. You don't necessarily have time to sit there and make videos every single day. And you don't need to. Uh, you can do content once a month. You, know, you can do longer form interviews like we're doing now. And, you know, have someone on your team or yourself create little clips from them. Yeah. And, and you know, sprinkle those on social media, <laughs> one per day or one every second day. And, you know, it's like mentality of, you know, creating the content once and, and publishing it everywhere. And I, I hate that feeling and I used to be like that where I'm like, oh, I got to make new content, new content, new content. But it's not always about new content. Obviously, you need new content, but sure. you don't have to make new content every single day to post every single day. So I make content. I used to make content once a week. And I have content every day, every channel for the entire week, just from that one 10-minute live stream I was doing. Yeah. And the, the other thing about it is, is that, uh, and you mentioned it, is taking content that are has already been created because a lot of content may not be ever, it may be evergreen. It doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, 
the topic of the day. We're not news reporters per right. se. And so taking that content, making uh, pieces of evergreen content, you can batch that process. Like you said, if, if you're feeling creative and you block out, you know, an hour once a week and you can actually take pieces of that pe- that content and, and share it out, which is so effective and it's so efficient and then you can just put it out there so it, it's yeah. it's a great tip great tip and i love that yeah and if you already have a youtube channel it's perfect right? yeah a youtube channel you've already got a library of content go yeah. in there you know rewatch, grab one minute clip and i find that 60 second is like the magic number because that's that mm-hmm. works on every platform from tiktok to ig reels to instagram to facebook linkedin etc just you know do that one clip and use that across all different platforms. And yeah. I always recommend try to do more than one clip as well. Like whether it's multiple clips from a single video or you know, every day grab a clip or have someone on your team do it. If you have, if you have a team and someone yeah. can do it. So I guess my biggest message here is don't feel like content is daunting. Don't feel like you need to create content every single day. You could if you want to, but that's not the objective here. Avoid the overwhelm, right? Yeah, you can't be overwhelmed. You got to be able to publish consistently on on social media, but not having to create consistently. Yeah, I totally agree. Chris Hennessy is in the room. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Wendy's uh, Good Morning Pirates. It's as though making a great dinner with lots of wonderful dishes that can be served up all week long in different combinations. Yes, yes that's a great analogy. <laughs> I am, that yeah, analogy. that is why I'm always talking about food. I don't know, Wendy. Thank you so much for joining us, though. I really that's a that is a great analogy. It's like okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a big meal. I'm gonna slice it up and package it, up, and then we can have different uh, different parts of it all week long. So. It's yeah, like, no, it's it's amazing. And then that, people always think, you know, your first instinct is I take a video and I make a little clips out of it. Mm-hmm. People, it doesn't have to be limited to video. You can take the video, get it transcribed. There's a lot of really inexpensive software that'll do that. Mm-hmm. And then turn that into a blog post, turn that into a social media text post. Yeah, um, There's more to it than, and, you know, grab quotes and put them as graphics from, you know, in two seconds, you can grab a template from Canva and just paste a quote from one of your videos. And that's content. It doesn't always have to be video. It doesn't have to be audio. Mix it up, serve it up. But the you know the heart of it is that initial piece of content that you created, whether it's a YouTube video done, you know, last week, a few months ago, last year, or it's new content that we're making today. Yeah. What what's the content that you enjoy making most? I mean, that's a great question because I used to be all about live streaming. Uh-huh. I loved it because you didn't have to edit. Yeah. Fire up the camera, especially <laughs> when you're having a conversation like we're doing now. You prepare in advance, but then you have a conversation. It's natural. It's real. And then your job is done as the content creator. You've already created yeah. this content, and you can slice and dice and repurpose all you want. Uh, but yeah. lately, I've been I, – lately, I mean, as of November, a few months ago, I just got into short-form content. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it because sometimes I just have this one single idea – that I want uh-huh. to convey in one minute. Because to me, one minute, even less, uh, is better. The shorter, the better. Yeah. So I've been going all in on TikTok and then obviously repurposing my TikToks to all my other platforms. But I love it. I love the short form. One topic, you know, I have a structure. I do my, I do a quick hook in the beginning. I say, hey, you're going to learn about this. Yeah. Here it is. If you like it, follow me for more. So it's like a very simple structure. And you deliver and you focus on this really good exercise in focusing on delivering one message per video. It's yeah. high energy. It's fast, very minimal editing. And I've been really enjoying it. Like I loved it. I look forward to doing it because I have fun with it. <laughs> look around a little bit. Yeah. Talk really fast. You know, it, it's just. I can tell you having a, you're having a great time during, during the shoot too. It's yeah. Just like, I just like record, record. It's off of my phone. <laughs> no, I just like just turn my camera angle to keep change different angles. It yeah. looks, and the beauty is because it's like you know short form content. It's not meant to be Hollywood style. You don't have to worry about yeah your background's a little messy. It's all good. It's real. <laughs> uh, it's just real and just being yourself and, and teaching. The point is you have to have value, of course. You can't yeah. just go in. Hey, I, I had this for breakfast. That's not really exciting for short form content. Um, yeah, but definitely short form is 
lately been my favorite. Yeah. Now I take that everywhere. It's the same, same principle. Take it, get it transcribed. I, well, I post the same short form across LinkedIn, Instagram, Instagram Reel, you name it, like all the social platforms. Yeah. And then turn into text posts from there, like, you know, short text posts, like get them transcribed and then put that as a text post. You, you can do so much, even with short form content. Yeah, I, I really, uh, I'm really curious what you've seen in the reactions and the response to those short form videos, uh, sharing across different platforms. Yeah, it's it's great. It's been great. I mean, to me, my you always I always tell people like have a go to platform, mm -hmm. right? especially if you're starting off. You're like, oh my, overwhelmed. How am I going to put it here and here and here and here? Just focus on creating like talking to whatever style it is. If you're on, if you want YouTube as your primary, you know, focus on creating one to two to three minute videos, maybe five minute videos. So more like teaching, really teaching some idea. If you want TikTok, my, my, my go-to right now is TikTok lately. Been experimenting there. Really short, 30 seconds to a minute, get your point across, but you got to make, make those daily or, at least post them daily. You know, I, I make three or four in one day and then I publish them separately. So focus on that one platform, what it wants, study it, follow the right people. Like that's, that's what I did. I followed all the people who are doing content tips, content marketing, mm. see what hashtags they're using, see who has the biggest followers, comment on their posts, like get into that community, learn about it, and then start posting content that see what's worked. Like, oh, this idea. People are talking about this. I'm going to make my version of that video and teach about what I learned and just study that platform um, and connect. It. It's, it's not it's engagement. Not, it's engage with people. Yeah. It's not about posting, you know, posting and walking away. It's all about getting into that community. I've made, I've had like three or four or five Zoom calls with people, one on one calls, not yeah. clients. And like we're just like partnerships and just chatting yeah. right from TikTok. And people would think, oh, TikTok is for kids it's dancing and it's not like that anymore you can really the more you post about a certain topic and you follow those people the more you learn that this it's a platform for everybody i need to go back and venture out and, and get that uh get my tiktok uh yeah i mean like honestly like if you're you know if you're rocking on linkedin focus on linkedin serve that linkedin community well and then you can still take that content put it on tiktok um, yeah and you can still repurpose it, but definitely pick a platform, study it, be active on it, grow your community on it. And then, you know, you will expand your reach by putting that same content on different platforms. Well, it's interesting too, because, uh, you know, I'm involved in, we're both involved in Winject yeah. and that's a podcasting platform. You know, a lot, of, it's actually a community where we're doing a lot of things for a lot of different, uh, podcasting, uh, you know, podcasters. And the other thing that I think is really important to understand is that like the pirate syndicate, you know, I'm, I'm teaching and coaching and sharing information with live stream producers that are producing shows for people. So there's a niche for almost anything that you want to do in the content creation space. Mm -hmm. And there's help and support in those arenas as well. And with repurpose.io, you know, I was actually teaching uh, what I called the traffic circle which is essentially the, the philosophy behind what you're allowing people to do with repurpose.io and, and building systems that allow you to support it or having people that you ha have assist you in that process is so critical because, um, you know, it's a noisy world. Let's, let's admit it. That, you know, there's a lot of noise. And that's why it's even more critical that we engage with people and build communities around this this concept and this idea of whatever it happens to be we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. The whole idea of community. Um, I feel a connection with my audience on TikTok. I feel it on Facebook and there's some platforms it's, it's, I feel it's cold. Like I try, I put out, I'm not getting the feedback for me. I mean, for me, it's Twitter uh, and, and even Instagram, Instagram is kind of hit and miss for me. And it's going to oh, okay. vary depending on your industry very depending on how how often you post etc um, but i'm not worried about that i'm still posting my content there <laughs> it's slowly growing like i'm slowly attracting the right people by using the hashtags have been a very interesting thing i've been studying for each platform mm. and doing a little bit of like research on that per platform and it's helping 
But yeah. it doesn't matter. It's not like I'm making content for Instagram and different content for Twitter and different content for TikTok. Yeah. I'm making it for one platform and I'm testing it out on all the other platforms. And, yeah. uh, and some are growing faster, some are growing slower, um, but they're, they're all growing. I but think it's... Better. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I, I used to my Instagram game used to be pretty good. And over the years, it's like, OK, I, you know, you wander. And for the most part, over time, my my home base has been LinkedIn. You know, yeah. that's where I've I've been placing most of my energy and, you know, continuing to share out to other platforms as well. And and I think I would probably benefit by going live a little bit more frequently on you know, Facebook and Instagram and, you know, up my game in stories uh, and, and do some more TikTok, yeah. uh, you know, short stories, short format things, because uh, I see you and I think it looks fun, you know, <laughs> and what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm, I did 500 episodes, probably closer to 600 now wow. in the live streams. And I'm thinking, I think I'm going to go down to one day a week. And then take time, take that time that I would produce shows in the morning and probably repurpose the content that I've already created and go through the, the library and actually pull some nuggets of knowledge out of those and then yes. share them in a short formats. I think that's going to be part of my effort going forward. Yeah, I think it's, you know, you're spending the time. It's still, you're creating content. Yeah. Like creating it from existing content you're creating these clips from existing content. So yeah, it's definitely a good strategy to, to take, especially if you're doing the long form, you're doing the podcast and you're doing the live streaming or the video that's not, you know, 30 seconds or a minute, you, you have a beautiful opportunity to take one video and turn that into four or five clips, especially when you have guests. They're always, there's always this golden moment that, you know, when you're talking to a yeah. guest and they say something you're like, wow, that's magic, right? Or you say something in the conversation. So there's a lot of nuggets that you can pull out yeah. from existing content. And that's a great strategy. Yeah. And it's, and it's not about like creating. I want to remind people, don't feel like you got to make more. You got to publish consistently, but you don't have to make all that content from scratch. You got to you gotta think about how I can take my content I already have or already created this week or last week and turn that into content I can trickle over and out on all the platforms every mm -hmm. single day. I think if you if you took 20% of your time in the content creation piece and 80% in the engagement and the promotion piece, you know, putting that out there, I think you would probably be further ahead than if you just created new content every yeah, single you're day. You're going to burn out. You're going to yeah. feel tired. And you're not going to get the reach, right? If you're making it always going live on one platform, for example, yeah. you're not. You're missing this opportunity of putting it on other platforms. It's like I have four, I think four, maybe five uh, live streams today. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. I mean, and, I, and I still have to, I still have work to do, you know, it's like, okay, I got, I got other things I got to get done today. So. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're, I mean, everybody, everybody's business is different. Some people can afford to put a whole day. Some people can afford maybe one day a month, but it's yeah. important to put out content. And if you're not even ready for video, do, do written content like yeah. do, some platforms work with like LinkedIn, just text, just to, you know, get your thoughts down in a little uh, LinkedIn post. You don't have to do video. I mean, I recommend video and you know mixing up video with text and graphics. But yeah, start by posting. Get your thoughts out. Get in the habit of writing out in this like. Not it's not always teach. I a lot of times for me, I I like to teach or kind of mm -hmm. educate, but it doesn't yeah. always have to be like that. It's actually better to mix it up. Tell yeah. something behind the scenes of your business, something that happened to you, happened to a client of yours. There's so many opportunities to share content that's not teaching. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to ask you, uh, do you create the video and then upload it to TikTok and Reels and Stories? Or how, what's your process for distributing? distribution of content that's a great question so you have a great tool and and i kind of want to think of behind the scenes uh, how you think yeah of absolutely I, I actually i was having a conversation with somebody on facebook yesterday about this and i'm just like let me just share with her what i do uh -huh. she's like blown away like wow thank you for sharing i'm like 
I love it. I love talking. Yeah, I love sharing. I love sharing. Like, there's no like, <laughs> hey, buy my course before I can tell you. No, it's no. It's like here's that. how I do it. Like, in fact, if you go to the Pirate Syndicate slash courses, there's a lot of free courses already up there. <laughs> yeah. So, so my my process is this. Um, I go. I've been focusing on short form. So TikTok's my number one. So shoot my one minute video. Do some basic editing on TikTok. Hit publish. Uh huh. So it's basically natively I from my phone, publish that to TikTok. And then within a few minutes or within the hour, uh, we have a recent integration with our with repurpose.io. I saw so that. It takes that TikTok video, sends it to my Google Drive. So I have a backup copy there. And then I go in to repurpose.io and I, and I can go in and I see my TikTok there and I just say publish to LinkedIn, publish to Twitter published to Facebook. So I go to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh-huh. and YouTube Shorts. Okay. It was like five clicks, one, two, three, four, five. I can even automate that, but I like to change, like for example, the title on TikTok is very short. So I like to add a little more kind of meat to the, uh, more substance to the title, especially on LinkedIn, you have more character. So mm-hmm. I expand on it, but really, if you didn't really care about that, you can just have everything automatically go to all those platforms. But I like to, massage them a little bit Mm -hmm. so you know in a few clicks i have it on linkedin twitter youtube shorts facebook page and then and and instagram my instagram feed and then the the reason why i send to my google drive is i have someone on my team go in and post that to ig reels and Mm. also pinterest has they ever going to open up their api Oh, for the reels, I'm checking on a daily basis. Not yet. (laughs) But there's another magical one that it's hard to explain why it's so, maybe because it's still new. It's it's called, it's Pinterest, but they have it something called a Pinterest idea pin, which is not your regular pin. It's an idea pin. It's basically like IG reels is to your Instagram feed. So it's this new thing. So I, I, I've been pulled, I've heard about it. I'm like, let me just try it. And the, you just yeah. get so much reach. It's amazing. You don't, you can't track the clicks, but the, just the eyeballs that you get on that platform. Yeah. It's amazing. So yeah. So those, those two are the manual ones, IG reels and the Pinterest idea pins. Yeah. Everything else uh, is automated through our platform. Which and is it, a beautiful platform, by the way. So it's, I mean, this is a r- rare new integration. So I'm really like kind of testing. I, I'm always my own customer. I build these things. I don't want to say for me, but for <laughs> the style of creator that you know that I, our audience is, and I'm my own customer, so that's yeah, yeah, that's always good. But yeah, that's my flow: is TikTok first, go out to social, and then uh, automatically to repurpose, and then manually to IG Reels and I and Pinterest idea pins. And I do yeah, that, just... I do it daily. Like I do not weekends, but I do four to five times a week a uh-huh. video. Sometimes I record them two or three. Um, in one sitting because there's an option to save as draft. So I can like basically edit everything on my mm-hmm. phone. Everything's done from our phone. There's nothing else. So there's no complicated technology. It's just the phone from the editing to the posting is all done through the phone. Um, you can save them as drafts and then you can publish them every morning to TikTok and then everything else happens automatically. Automagically delivered. Automagically, yeah, that's my favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's brilliant because, and that's why I think I gravitated so well with with connecting with you back in the podcasting days because the philosophy of content creation and just working this flow and making this workflow easy for people to understand. It's like you don't have to create it. The thing, you know, shifting gears a little bit. Um, I still have corporate clients that feel that content isn't the way they get business. Hmm. And, and are you bumping up against that in the enterprise or the corporate environments? Are you, are you seeing more adoption in those arenas or do you think that there's going to be um, opportunities? I, I see a lot of opportunities opening up, but I, I'm not sure uh, what the adoption rate looks like. And I was going to ask you what you what you've seen and kind of what your experience has been with enterprise. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. For me, it's I mean, we attract because our our platform is you know, like it's low price and it's it's ta- it's tailored for smaller 
content creators, like sure. solo people or people with very small teams. So I don't work with, with enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, like I, we don't do coaching consulting. We're just, you know, we're a software company, right. um, but you know, we tailor our software for people who want to basically automate as much as possible or very low team size or, or resources. So they want these systems in place that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I, you know, I've seen from my years of experience that like, yeah, enterprise, bigger companies, they want everything to be professionally shot and which makes sense, right? They have an image and a brand, but that prevents them from putting content out consistently. And we talked about the importance of consistency. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's like, you have to, it's a mind shift change where you got to say, okay, maybe, maybe you admit you're producing this high, uh, high production value live stream maybe once a month but you you need to make that content live for more than just you know on youtube for example you got to take that slice and dice and make clips and turn it into an audio podcast and turn it into text post make give give more extend the life of that one piece of content so yeah. that it can you know work for you um, and you can't do that if you're not like social media is not going to work if you're posting one video a month or no. even once a week, it's it's still not enough. I feel yeah. like to really get traction, you got to be doing it almost daily. Um, yeah, it's you know, uh, it's not like I'm not saying I'm not saying you make a video every day, but you know, I mean, like, gotta be something your, has to be put feed out there. on as many channels as you can. Oh, I I I go for daily if you know if you want to do this. Yeah, I, I I'm a fan of daily, and you know, and I've been creating content for a long time <laughs> i've been out there for a long time and i enjoy creating content i i i like creating content and even that allows me to kind of express what's going on and, and some of the things and it's it does get exhausting sometimes when you you get busy and you know you know you got client work that needs to be completed yeah. or you got uh, you know activities in life and and it, so you just have to anything you could do to make it easier Anything you could do to simplify the process and the workflow. And that's why I, I really love what you're doing with repurpose.io. And, and I thought it would be a great idea to have this conversation and just get on here and, and share some things, that, you know, nuggets of knowledge that we can actually share and uh, kind of expand to the, to the community. Cause uh, yeah. you know, it's all about, it's all about giving back as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you nailed, like we talked about it earlier, it's it's this process. Have a process, have a system, whether it's software, whether it's, you know, human power, you know, someone on your team, whatever. Even if it's you doing it, have a system, document it, like have it written down somewhere because yeah. you don't want to be thinking. You want to be able to create and let it go out. And then next yeah, day, don't burn calories on the thought process. Yeah, yeah. You waste out time there. and energy. So yeah, have a system in place doesn't have to be all software it could be a mix of software and people it could be all people depending yeah. on your budget and if possible as the creator uh -huh. your energy goes into this what we're doing now we're creating yeah. and offload everything else if you can and I know document and system. delegate <laughs> delegate put it through the system again like i said you know human system software system combination but whatever it is yeah. focus your energy on what we're doing now deliver yeah. the value and then, you know, your job is done. Let yeah. the system take over. The next week, next day, whatever your system, whatever your creation flow is, you're you're energized. You're not burning out on all yeah. the extra stuff. So that's that's a big big takeaway from this. Yeah, Liz says hard to get your own content is a challenge. Uh, <laughs> did I miss the best advice about how to post to all social at one time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the answer, no, the answer, Liz, is to repurpose.io. In fact, I got a call with her. Uh, she's a client, and she has a show coming up this afternoon for the Wild West Diversity, where she talks about the Wild West and rodeos and some of the oh. people that have been involved in the history of uh, things growing up and, and different people that have been involved and engaged that their stories haven't necessarily been told. So she's got an interesting history and an interesting uh, opportunity to share. So. That's awesome. Liz, you got a ton of content. You got tons of stories. You got tons of opportunities to to share it out. And so we'll get. Uh, and I broadcast those live streams to multiple platforms at, at one time. So it's it's not necessarily just uh, you know going to one platform and then sharing it out again. I 
I blast it out to multiple platforms. So it's, it's much easier for people to find as they go through this process. Yeah. Yeah. Cause some people hang out here and some people hang out there. So yeah. you want to be where they hang out, not have them come look for you. <laughs> who am I to decide who the, where you need to hang out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would just be where they are. I, if we have a few minutes, I want to share my, like I talked earlier about my short form process, like how I yeah. short form. I also Expand want to share, I used to do it the other way. Uh, uh -huh. So I can, if you want me to, I can, if we have a few minutes, I'll talk quickly yeah. about how to, uh, how to do that. So I used to go live for 10 minutes a week. Okay. That's it. And I decided to do it solo. I didn't want to coordinate schedule with anybody, but depending on nature, you can do an interview yeah. style like we're doing now. Probably actually better if you do an interview style, but I used to go live solo for 10 to 15 minutes, prepare a topic, some slides, I just my notes when I read, I just talk. Mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of traction initially on my live stream, but I, I multicast it like we're doing now with the LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all at the same time. Then someone on my team goes in and picks four or five clips, and then we, those clips get scheduled out to the different platforms, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, et cetera. So even though I went live on LinkedIn, I still share a clip on LinkedIn on another day. No one's going to remember, oh, he already talked about this. Don't yeah. worry about that. It's not because <laughs> people are going to see your content at different times, right? So you don't yeah. feel like you're you're overwhelming or you're, you're like spamming your audience. You're not. You're not. No one's going to no one's going to notice, right? You yeah. want to be posting regularly. And then what we started doing as well is we took that live stream, got it transcribed, and there's a lot of tools out there. We can mention them if you want, but basically, it doesn't matter what tool you use. Transcription that became a blog post, um, and then. Cool. A nice little cool little trick we did is we took that transcription and I summarized it down to 2,200 characters. It, it's not automated. Someone has to read it and just kind of yeah. cut out some things, reformat it. And that that became a social media text post, like a long form text post. Those are great on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it doesn't work on Twitter, uh, but LinkedIn is great for that. So when people like you know have long text and they click the more button to keep reading, that registers an engagement and that helps more visibility on the platform. So text yep. posts work really, really well. And we would post the same on Instagram as well, but Instagram needed a picture. So I would just take a random picture of me just sitting on my desk or whatever. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to even be related to the live stream content. It's just a random picture of yourself. And then you have good value because a picture draws your attention. Yeah. When well, scrolling, oh yeah, that's a picture of, of Russ. Oh, and then they read, oh, okay. So the per picture doesn't have to be necessarily related to what the live stream is about, but it just draws their attention. And you can there have another piece of content um, on Instagram. We did that on Facebook and we did that on LinkedIn, like the text versions and yeah. also the clips. And then the last thing we did was we pulled maybe two or three quotes and we just pasted it into our template from Canva and that became a graphic. So we post the graphic post. So from that one minute live stream, sorry, that 15 minute live stream that I did once a week, we had content on every platform in different formats every day for the entire week. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Amazing, right? So there's so many different opportunities, whether you want to create short, you know, and distribute that, or you want to create long form and slice and dice. Is there's still you can turn every piece of content into like at least have it on 33, have it on different platforms 33 different ways. Yeah. Uh, I uh I typically take the, I've been taking on the pirate broadcast, you know, I, I multi-stream it and then I do exactly what you, you suggested. Mm -hmm. I take it and create a podcast out of it, which is distributed off to like 20 platforms. And then I take the, uh, I'm currently using Otter or not Otter. I was using Otter and now I'm using Descript mm -hmm. to do the transcriptions. And then that goes into a blog post and then that goes back out into the to the stream and and uh then i could continue to share that out over yeah. and over again yes. so and, and it's really uh once you get the rhythm down and you get the workflow down and you get some support around it uh it's not that difficult and i think what i'm going to do instead of uh, going live every day i think i'm going to shift it up this year like i mentioned in I think I'll do maybe once a week, go live for a longer period of time, and then maybe um, take that and and put more energy in the engagement side and the the content processing side. Yeah. So, 
Maybe you can do some uh, TikToks. Maybe I'll do some TikToks. Yeah, you can turn these one minute clips. Yeah, uh, into TikTok videos. Uh, I think they, well, I think they actually extended it to what two and a half minutes now. Yeah, I think you can even go, maybe even five. I for sure three, for sure yeah. three, maybe even five. But let my what I learned again. I like I studied TikTok. Uh huh. Like, when I first started, I studied it. Like I wanted to do it right, <laughs> not waste my time on it. Um, one of the biggest factors is, is on TikTok, maybe uh -huh. other platforms as well, but I know for sure on TikTok, well, I don't know for sure, but from my experience is the watch time, the percent of watch time. So if you have a 30 second video and someone watches all of it, they're more likely to watch all of it. Uh -huh. And that's like, oh, 100% watch time. That's good content. If you have yeah. a three minute video and they watch the first 10 seconds or the first 30 seconds, that's a smaller percentage. Right. And that's like, oh, TikTok's like, oh, no, this is not good content. So yeah. that's why I'm just like sh compress that to as short as possible, fifteen yeah. to a minute max on TikTok. Even a minute is pushing it. I know it sounds like oh my god, one minute. Like <laughs> what am I gonna say in one minute? But trust me, if you have a one topic, you talk a little bit fast because it's got to be like energy. Right? Yeah, like, you have to have a little bit of energy into and it. And you, you can get a lot of information. <laughs> in that one minute. And I yeah. keep mine under a minute because I know I'm repurposing to IG, to Twitter and to LinkedIn. So I just keep it under one minute and it works on all the other platforms. Yeah. Uh, a qu quick question. Do you use a separate channel for YouTube for your sh shorts? No, I use them on a main channel. Uh, okay. So they, they kind of split up the videos automatically. So if you have a vertical video that's under 60 seconds, YouTube will put that. It just shows up as a short. On okay. your channel. So you don't have to do anything actually anymore. I was right? kind of curious about that because some people, you know, when it first came out, people were saying, Hey, I, I'm going to put it on another channel and, and do you know, something out. different with it. It's like, I have, you could. I mean, yeah, if you like, mm -hmm. again, like, I don't, I'm, I'm more simple. Like, let me just put this <laughs> out there. You know, I make long form videos once in a while, not as much. Like, yeah. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of my content now on YouTube is a short form. And again, YouTube, it's hit and miss. Sometimes yeah. I get a few thousand views. Sometimes I get like 20. It's yeah. It does, it's not considered. IG Reels was the same. I post yeah. this one video, it's like 20. Next yeah. day I post a different video, it's 3,000. I'm like, what? what do you well, mean? LinkedIn killed LinkedIn killed their stories. They used to have it for a little oh, bit. Okay. They oh, had it for a little bit and then it went away. So oh, now that I've seen something about audio audio rooms now. They're getting audio, into audio rooms now. Yeah, it's like Clubhouse. but Yeah. Uh, yeah, I but, think you were, you were probably involved in the dub days or the not dub but um, blab days. Oh yeah, the blab day, that was like to me like the original. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> people on video like with a simple browser, it was amazing. It was amazing. I met so many people. Yeah, I met that. so many people there. But, yeah, technology's changed. I, you can't do it all if you're, especially if you're not making any content. You're like, oh, what do I do? Do I do Clubhouse? Do I do that? Always think. Can that content, can I repurpose that content easily? That's yeah. always like my thing. Like if I clubhouse, I don't know about now, but back then you couldn't record them. So it's yeah. like, and then what's the point of spending an hour in a group discussion? Then the next content is goes away anywhere else. It's, it's like, no, no, thank you. You know, I might join a few clubhouses and speak or, or listen in, but as my main content, no, it's either yeah. YouTube. And if you're not comfortable on camera, then do an audio podcast. And, or if you're not comfortable, uh, sorry, YouTube lives, just, just do a live. That's the yeah. best way, in my, my opinion. If you're not comfortable live, then do a YouTube video. If you're not comfortable being on camera, do an audio podcast. And if you don't have time or to schedule interviews, play around with short form content like TikTok or, or yeah. IG or whatever you want to do. But short form, under a minute content. Um, yeah. That's it. All those can be repurposed into all the different formats we talked about. So, I love just it. Keep that in mind. When you want to give as much life to your content as you can. Don't let it just go on a platform and then disappear and you can't get it again. Yeah. Well, Hanny, this has been fan fabulous and, and I really appreciate you stopping by. It's always great to connect with you and hang out. So uh, if there's anything we could do to add value to your day, I know uh, <laughs> Liz says, uh, I'm on it, repurpose.io. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, and she nice. says that TikTok blocked us at three minutes today. So uh, just an update. Three minutes is a long time.
for sure. Yeah, it is. Especially yeah. on TikTok, the attention span is so short there. That you need to, like, people are like, next, next, <laughs> next. So you got to, those first three seconds, you got to capture their attention. Yeah. And then that's the first part of your video. And then <laughs> how do you keep them on for three minutes? It's pretty hard. So that's why I'm almost telling 30 seconds to a minute max. Yeah. The first three seconds are the most important thing. Like, say something you're like, oh, I'm going to pause here and listen. Um, so <laughs> definitely. And then the stickers. I can learn a lot about st- not these stickers. Oh, yeah. What about the stickers? We haven't like even the talked text about the stuff, like, Same idea, right? People yeah. are scrolling through. Sometimes the sound is off or uh-huh. low. So the first three seconds, do you want to you want to sell them on your first three seconds is to sell them on watching the next three seconds of the video. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. why should they stop scrolling? Oh, learn how to, you know, push that. Like one of my latest videos, like, you know, how to push your TikToks to, uh, to YouTube shorts automatically. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah. interesting. I'll stop. That was like my headline. That's why I said vi- verbally, but also in text, that was the most visible part. So yeah. I caught their attention for anybody interested in that caught yeah. their attention in the first three seconds. Well, what it does is qualifies people. Yeah. You know, like I don't, like I don't necessarily that. need to spend a, a lot of invest, a lot of energy in people that have no interest whatsoever in my products. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and it's, it's about like, yeah. Filtering people out that don't want. And then when you, obviously whatever hook you get them on, whatever you get them to, to stop scrolling, you got to deliver on that. I like, don't promise them something. And then, your whole video is just like a lot of fluff. So like, yeah, I think I'd call that clickbait. Don't you? Like clickbait. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, you know, people do that. Like, oh, how to make a million dollars on TikTok. And then you're yeah. like, they don't tell you anything. I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> but whatever hook you give them in the first three seconds, give it right away. Catch their yeah. attention. Use text, like visuals as well as you telling it. Cause that's a very visual platform. And, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot. I took a lot of notes since November. When I started learning from everybody else on TikTok, yeah, and it's on my list probably in the next couple of weeks to kind of put that together and like just a little blog post or something just to share my experience. I don't have like a gazillion followers. I'm not like that. I was like, let's yeah. build a natural audience, but I build it relatively quickly. Yeah, and more importantly, it's the right people that I I want to attract. I'm not attracting. That's people. the key. That's yeah. the key. I want I want to connect with the right people. And, the right people. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'll have to check it out. You've inspired me to, 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 to take a look, another look at it. So, well, Hanny, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you and all you, all the time and effort and energy that we, you do in the repurpose.io and helping so many people around the world create their content and get it out there. Cause I, I believe in it and I, I believe in what you're doing. So I, anything I can do to support you is happy to do so. Appreciate it. And thanks for having me here. It's a lot of fun. All right. And everyone, as you know, come back. The Pirate Syndicate is here to help you teach and, and, you know, support your live streaming community efforts. And also, you know, there's courses over there that you can do a lot of different things. Dub, uh, content creation, repurposing, uh, podcasting, all of those things that that are out there and we continue to develop it. So I just really appreciate you because kindness is cool and smiles are free and you enjoy the day. Take care, everyone. Thank you for joining the Pirate Broadcast. If you found this content valuable, please like, comment, and share it across your social media channels. I would love the opportunity to help others grow in their business. The Pirate Syndicate is a platform where you show up, we produce the show. It's that easy. If you want to be seen, be heard, and be talked about, join the Pirate Syndicate.